Hey, everybody. Welcome to No Reserve, part of the Haggerty Podcast Network. Now, we're here to help you make sense of the enthusiast car market, whether you're buying, selling, or just watching. Now, this week's we have the Deals Have Returned, part two. We've got a four grand Porsche Boxster and a vintage Land Rover for Corolla money. That doesn't mean everything is cheap, however, and the crazy money still resides in the Ferrari camp. This week, we talk about a Ferrari Formula One car that sold for 14 million bucks and our Dino 206 project that needs a pile of work and cash. I'm Larry Webster, editor of Haggerty Media. And I'm Dave Kinney, the publisher of the Haggerty Price Guide. Now, between the two of us, we've got decades of experience buying, selling, and of course, driving the cars we love. Plus, we're backed by the data of the Haggerty Valuation Tools. Hello, Dave. Hello, Larry. Let's go. Well, Dave, we are recording this on Wednesday, November 16th. First, I got to do something I hate doing. You better, What's that, Larry? So you remember this. I got to eat a little crow. Oh, and, and was that about maybe a car that I picked that you thought I was just a little bit crazy on? Is uh, that the Dave, one? Dave, 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 a broken clock is right twice a day. But go ahead. Have your fun. Explain. The 1971 Stutz Blackhawk with the Elvis connection that was at the Meekum sale uh, in Las Vegas, the place to sell a Elvis car and a Stutz and everything else, uh, which you were a little skeptical of, sold yeah. for three thousand dollars short of three hundred thousand dollars. That's two hundred ninety-seven thousand for those of you playing at home. I think I was right on this one. I think uh, maybe you thought it was a ten grand car, maybe something like that. I, I mean, what? It's a kid car. Come on, you know it's, it's like ho oh, 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 oh. Uh, His name is Larry Webster. <laughs> uh, he's available to be reached at uh, Haggerty at any time. You can just give him a call, send him an email. He'd love to hear from you. It's not a kid car. It's pretty close. Right, no. the chassis is GM. It's all GM running gear. Right, right, right. It was made by an actual coach builder. I mean, this is not something done in someone's backyard in upstate New York. Right? No, 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 no. In Italy, in Italy. Oh, mm. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I, well, I, there's I, a way I, to start I, things off. Now, <laughs> now I got you angry at me. That's good. Let's go. I mean, whatever, Dave. I mean, crow about this all you time, and and I, I I can't explain it. I hope the new owner really enjoys it. It's such an oddball car. I mean, and you know, if we go to the other end of the spectrum, probably what I think is more uh, even elegant and a usable car. Did you see that '92 Mercedes 300 SL that sold for twelve thousand bucks last week? That was kind of amazing because this car has only thirteen thousand miles. I'm sorry, it sold for sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, with all the uh, with all the the uh, fees and stuff like that, apparently it's around seventeen thousand. But yeah, it's a, I, I talked to the person representing the car. Uh, he says it's a lovely car, new tires, valve cover gaskets, things like this. This is the three hundred though, and uh, this is with the uh, the wiring harness. Yeah, that's right, and the wiring harness that apparently uh, was so eco friendly it disappears over time. <laughs> um, but I still like it. I still think it's a. I still think it's a good buy. That's a lot of Mercedes for the money. Yeah, I, okay, so I get it. The three hundred is the less desirable because it is the six cylinder car. They made a five hundred and a six hundred around this time. I don't care. I think. I think. I think this is one we can both agree on. I think that was a well bought oh. car. Oh my gosh, well bought all day long. Because it's basically a wrapper car. This is the finest looking Mercedes SL of the modern era, in my opinion. And these were overbuilt. This yep. is when, when still the engineers ran that company. And it comes with a, a folding hard top, which was early for the day. Super comfortable, super quiet, super refined. I mean, I just don't, you know how I love to play a substitution game. What would I, what else would I get for 16 grand that does what this thing does? I don't think you can find anything. That's why it's no, amazing. Well it's certainly not going to be anything with as much uh, prestige Style. as as right. those uh, that three pointed star. Uh, just to give you an idea, the price guide these hit at uh, thirty eight three for a brand new car, uh, number one twenty six nine. Right. Our number three is uh, let's see twelve five, and our number four is seventy seven hundred. So this thing um, sold for uh, let's call it a three plus three plus uh, two minus price, right where right where probably you'd want it, but. This is a lower miles one that you probably find, so that's great. Yeah, it's really cool too because it's one of those cars that I don't think most people could would ID that it's thirty years old. You know, they no, still look you're really right. modern. You're right, and, and, and this one was on Hegarty Marketplace too, right? 
Yeah, it was on the Hagerty yeah. Marketplace, the new auction thing, and uh, super cool. So, you know, anytime there's like a new platform, there's usually deals. So yep. um, I am definitely keeping my eyes out there. Uh, the other thing now that, that that you brought up, super freaking cool. This uh, RM Sotheby's sold a 2003 Ferrari Formula One car. Um, I know this was on high on your radar. Dave, uh, I'm going to go on a limb. I don't know if you'd fit in this thing, but tell me why you want uh, you, you liked it. I thought you picked it. I didn't pick it. <laughs> hey, for um, uh, what was it? Fourteen million six hundred and thirty thousand um, uh, Swiss francs, which is about the same as the dollar. Uh, it, you know, the dollar and the Swiss franc are pretty close right now. Mm. Um, that's a lot of money. It's a great, you know, for somebody. It's going to be a great vintage race car eventually. But it's a 2003, so they got a ways to go before they're going to use it in a lot of vintage stuff. It's a lot of car for the money and much better than one that just hangs on the wall. So uh, X Schumacher, which is, you know, the, the big uh, uh, the big appeal here. Uh, it, this has got to be one of the coolest Formula One cars of the last 50 years. It's got five the, victories by Schumacher yeah, on this Schumacher, car. This is the Ross Braun, Rory Byrne uh, era at Ferrari where they were just running the tables. It has the non-turbo, 19,000 RPM V10, which, uh, go to YouTube, here are these yeah, things. Yeah. They, no Actually, I said five it. victories in this car. That's not correct. As he's driven, he drove to five victories during his world championship winning 2003 yeah. F1 season. But this was a podium finish car, so that's, uh, that's very cool. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it comes with the Ferrari red book classic a certification so that's yeah. even better i mean the downside of this is that you are tied to the ferrari factory if you want to run this thing right? <laughs> yes you are you has- better make some friends with guys at the factory guys yeah. and gals at the factory and and so. they have a a, a course client how do you say client yeah mm-hmm. uh, yes say your fin- your fancy client cliente thank you dude yeah you bet. um so you're going to be tied uh, because it, it has all the electronics to run it. You need a whole team to get it fired up. All those tolerances to spin that kind of engine speed mean you got to carefully heat up the oil and the coolant before you even fire it up. But I, I, there will not be in the future, dare I say, Dave, a more important, valuable Formula One machine than this Schumacher car. It's a very cool car. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I'm wondering who bought it. I wonder if it went to somebody who has, you know, access to a track. I certainly hope so. I'd like to see this thing, you know, out and about again. Uh, well, it would be nice to see. Well, it speaks to like the, the people that vintage race are crazy. There's a, uh, cause <laughs> I do some vintage racing and there's a guy who runs a uh, Lamar winning Audi R8 and he has the entire team. It is the wildest thing to be out on the track. Cause I was out there once and here comes this R8 silently going by like effortlessly and it was sort of like really uh off-putting amazing awesome for a second i could imagine that that i was going down with sarth but it was florida <laughs> a little different <laughs> hey uh larry yes i just noticed that uh we have broken our cheap porsche boxster record Oh boy! Uh, didn't we have one like two weeks ago that was like six grand and yeah, we were so crowing how wonderful it is well at the Meekum sale uh in uh uh this was also las vegas one sold for four thousand four hundred dollars and this was a running driving car i mean uh, does that mean like in three weeks you know we'll just show up at an auction and they'll just give us one is that how it's going to work i think that's the that's what we should be trying for for sure i mean especially this car the one you're talking about it had the bigger motor it had the two seven not the two five yep which mm-hmm. is kind of even more amazing there, and there of course don't you think there was something to this? Like if you looked under it and there was obvious crash damage or something, because this does seem really well bought, right? Well, you know, it's Vegas. So maybe, uh, you know, maybe it has a backstory that doesn't want to be told. Who knows? But, uh, I, you know, at, at $4,400, I will argue all day long, you can part this car out for probably twice that. Uh, and maybe even more, especially since it's a running driving car. You can have somebody listen to the motor before you pull it out. Do the same with the tranny. Drive it. I mean, yeah, okay, so the seats are a little beat up and, you know, the paint's not perfect and everything else. Yeah, you know, the wheels are probably 250 a piece to the right guy. So, I, you know, sorry, but this is just too cheap not to buy if you got room in the garage. $4,400, and I'm going to say it again. It's just, I, you know, think about it. I, I probably got a bill coming up on, you know, my wife's Ford Escape 
of around four thousand four hundred dollars <laughs> to get the service done. Right. Uh, we won't talk about removing the dents. Uh, that would, you know, that would triple that. So, right. Tires and brakes are now four grand. Exactly. Yeah, it, this is uh, why, like, live auctions are so fun. Because if you're really watching, this is probably Dave Wright, one of those cars that went early in the weekend. And perhaps nobody was bidding and somebody just needed to get rid of it. Is that how this works? Number 44 on Thursday. I think you're absolutely right. Okay. While everybody was setting up or, you know, still at work or whatever, uh, you know, this thing went across and there were no Boxster buyers there. And somebody, uh, I think, walked away with a great deal. I mean, look, even if you use this, even if you, you know, put it on the battery tender, use it at your, you know, your your house that you use once a month in the summertime at the, you know, the cabin in the woods or something. Yeah, gosh, it's got to be worth it. It's amazing. Uh, I mean, the top alone, like the tops on these things were really, they worked really well. I mean, this power top and these were fantastic handling cars. They sounded really good. The, what amazes me is I have a junker ratty Miata. That's probably worth the same amount. And so which mm -hmm. one I'd rather have. There's no question. I'd rather have No question. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. Dave, Dave, it, like you see this stuff before it happens. You got to let me know. You let me be prepared, all right? You tell me after the fact, it does nothing for me. Deal? Well, yeah, that's why we have another segment where we talk about cars that are coming up. But uh, <laughs> let's talk about some more that already sold, by the way. Huh? Well, talk about the next one, the the ninety nine uh, the the 1999 Porsche 911 that sold at the same auction. And this yeah, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of Porsche tiers out there right now, from what I understand. Uh, you know, wham, 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 because at 20900 this is a 9911 a 911 Carrera coupe. Uh this is the built in the uh, 993 factory version because it's a uh uh 1999 with an early production 98. It has the cable throttle which apparently to Porsche people is a really big deal. A number 1 for this. Are you ready? If this was a number 1 car, which it clearly isn't, would be $63,000. That's perfect. Num That's perfect perfect right. shape like right. so 500 miles. Okay, so our number three is a damn good car, okay? Like, you you would really not, you know, say goodbye to it for any reason other than you needed the money. That's at $30,000. Our number four is at $23,000. That's a car with a lot of stories, maybe, and some, you know, needs this, needs this. This car was 20900 so it was even below our number four. Wow. That's cheap, 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 and I don't know if that's, market indicator or just the fact that this was a you know another thursday car um car number 74 at meekum uh on november 10th but that's cheap money again and uh again i would say you could probably part it out for that kind of money should you want to but why would you it's a well, running driving there, car there's a whole host of reasons that this generation boxers and 911s which are very uh mechanically linked are are so inexpensive i mean because as you know the interiors were a low point for quality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They look, I mean, the, yeah. the photos, you, these are kind of blurry and dark. And I'm telling you, once you sit in it, they feel like they've been a taxi cab for 10 years. So <laughs> that, that is a bit of a downside. I, I look at, I've been looking at these forever. I can't get over the, what they call the fried egg headlights. I think they're ugly. And Larry, uh, Larry, wow. you don't see the headlights when you're driving. Remember that, okay? Yeah, it, uh, there's a lot of disappointments with this car, in my view, because, it's, right, as you know, the first water-cooled one, I tested them a ton. They're fast, really, really faster than the previous air-cooled, the 993, but you lost a lot of the character. Yeah. Right? The, the pedals now don't hinge at the floor. They hinge uh, up above underneath the dash. You got lots and lots of plastic. You lost that binnacle that 911s had. I get it. They're performing better. They do everything better. but it just lost a little bit of that soul. And of course the market's uh you know taking that into consideration. But twenty thousand bucks on I wanted to argue with this and say like that was like the right price for this car because it's very unappealing. But what are you gonna get for twenty grand? Like a, yeah. a WRX with ten thousand miles or a hundred thousand miles is probably fifteen, right? Your neighbor down the street does not know this isn't a hundred thousand dollar car. Now, not the car guy neighbor down the street, but the neighbor down the street's gonna think you just spent a hundred thousand dollars. But in reality, you bought a car with a hundred thousand miles instead. But wait a minute, it's got nine thousand I'm sorry, ninety nine thousand three hundred miles. So this guy can even get it to uh, get it financed for the next 700 miles, right? So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you need a car. You're going to go to the dealer and buy a new Civic or are you going to get a 20 year old 911? I know what I'm doing. What are you going to do, Dave? 
Oh, yeah. I don't think I'm a civic kind of guy. So uh, <laughs> now if it's an accord, uh, you know, maybe, uh, well, whatever. Yeah, there you go. All right. So uh, the other one that was really cool is this, this really, really old British Jeep called the Land Rover. And sure. Man, they get this old, and I, I got to be straight with you, Dave. I sort of lose me a little bit. But uh, I know you are you just got back from from Ireland. You're really big into the old country. This this thing probably tickled your feather, didn't it? Oh, I like this thing. I like this thing for another reason, too. It was $18,150. We're talking a 59 Land Rover 88, uh, which is mm. the wheelbase on these things, Series 2A. Mm. Um, this was not the diesel. It's in Keswick green, which is the color you want for this. I mean, it's the, uh, you know, it's the landed gentry color. It's the rich people color. It's the, uh, uh, where did I park my Land Rover? Uh, I'll have my boy go get it, uh, color. So it's all great with that. Um, at, uh, let's see, it sold for 18150 again at Meekum. Uh, we have a number four at seventeen three. So this is right around our number three price, where our number one goes up to eighty seven six. Now, this was not a number one car. It does have new tires. Uh, it's got the brass fire extinguisher mounted in the back, which is kind of cool. It's got that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, interior where the uh, uh, kids sit in the back and they look at each other and get in a fight, as Mr. Colin Comer reminded me uh, last week. <laughs> um this was restored in 2022 it is not oh. it is not an old uh crap box it is actually a pretty good car well, um well, and Dave, also converted to 12 the 12 volts so you can even start the damn thing let's talk about condition a little bit when you say number one number two number three number four these are what the Haggerty price guides use to kind of determine what shape the car is in because of course that determines the price Yep. So n- number one is more or less it drives off the showroom as as good as it will ever be on the Concord lawn on the showroom floor. You're absolutely right. Right. So number one, you almost never see. So right. kind of the best you're going to get is a number two. You know, this one we we're not looking at it. the The panels are so straight. I mean, it's not hard to do a restoration. This one looks to me like a two three. So yeah, pretty yeah. nice, right? And those panels are aluminum, my friend, as well, not aluminum right. because they're in Britain, so it's aluminum. Uh, the best way to say it is just say alloy and everybody understands. But anyhow, um, this car had a restoration on it. I think it was between a two and a three, which means it would be worth between thirty eight nine and fifty one thousand yeah. dollars. And this yeah. thing was bought probably the best buy we got today at eighteen one fifty. Yeah, somebody got a great deal. And, yep. you know, here's the other thing question for you. I think in the U.S. when it's left hand drive, because most of these are right hand drive. That's got to help the value. And so this one's even got that great feature going for it. Sure. Unless you're delivering the mail in the United States, you do not want a right-hand drive car. Uh, full stop. I'm with you. I mean, I, I know people that have it and are like, oh, it's no big deal. I'm like, yeah, no, that sucks. Yeah. So, and yeah. You, you can't pass anything because you have to go way out into the lane. And by that <laughs> time, it's already over. So, yeah, not good. Not good. Yeah. The, the thing is with these, um, you know, they, they're really primitive. They're very much like tractors. But they're they're really fun to just bop around it. Yep. So, um, you know, if we can imagine ourselves with our Hamptons house, Dave, I know you've got one there, a couple. This is probably the perfect car to go get coffee in for that. And for the rest of us, maybe, I don't know, maybe go hunting. Maybe you do a little off-roading, overlanding, who knows, but cool car. I, I don't know how you found out about my house in the Hamptons. I, I'm and I have to talk to Billy Joel. I live right next to him, and you know it, it just you know. And Martha Stewart is blabbing all the time about my house, so I guess she was probably the one who told you, right? Yeah, she's getting all her best recipes from you, is what I hear. Yeah, me and Snoop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to the kicking tires segment. These are uh, cars that are currently for sale. And a friend of ours both sent us this one, a really intriguing car. It's a 1988 Mercor XR4Ti five-speed manual. Uh, this is the Bob Lutz special, right? Because Bob Lutz was was over at Ford at the time. He saw this car in the global lineup, and he said, we got to get something sportier in the U.S. for Ford. Put it in the Mercury dealership. It's basically a Ford Sierra. Right. So it's turbocharged, five-speed, uh, super cool. And... This one is just, I, it's for sale. It's just a great price. 6000 bucks. Where, yeah. are you gonna, where else are you going to do that? One oh, owner roster. car. One yeah. owner car. Um, so, I mean, it's in Pennsylvania, which, of course, warning, warning, uh, you know, could have rust on it. But I don't have the miles in front of me here. I know I saw them earlier. 
But uh, uh, we're talking about a reasonable miles car in red, all the right looks to it. And these cars will be classic cars. Uh, trust me. I mean, you know, we didn't get the Ford Sierra. We got the horribly named Mercury Mercure. This is the XR4 Ti with a five-speed $6,000 buy, buy, buy. Uh, this is on Facebook Marketplace. So no scams there. It must be right. Um, <laughs> we've got a number one at fourteen five, which I still say is oh. cheap. These uh, are in the price guide. Of nice. course, they're in the price guide, you, Lawrence. Dave. Come on, that man. On top of it. Okay, our good, number good, good. four is four thousand bucks. Our number three is eighty five hundred. Our number two is eleven grand. So uh, I'd say this thing's probably closer to eighty five hundred than it is to uh, four grand. But just by the looks of it, I did, you know I haven't drilled down on it. But uh, I think that sounds like a great buy. So you know it pays to look. Uh, Tim McNair, shout out to Tim. Thank you there for finding this for us and sending this on and uh, really appreciate this when uh, stuff like this shows up i wouldn't have seen it on facebook marketplace but he lives close to the place that uh, it came from so that's why he found it so there are you, you go. gonna buy it are you gonna buy it no i'm uh, i'm trying to i'm trying to spend my money on more expensive things that cost more money to fix uh, you know i <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the, the I'm doing the Larry Webster buy high sell low. I'm I'm doing real good with it. Thank you. It's really fun. It's freeing. Just <laughs> own it. The downside to this thing, it doesn't have the early cars had that that uh, two level spoiler. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I know wing. it was hard to see out of it, but that really made it cool. Um, you know, I, this is interesting, but I, I just. You know, I've got a Fox body Mustang in the same era. Sure. And I, I guess, you know, being born in Jersey, what am I going to drive? Uh, GT, Lincoln? Mustang GT? Or Cadillac? AmeriCorps? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I was going the other way. I was thinking, uh, yeah, I was thinking a different. No, but then the price, <laughs> 6000 bucks. A lot of fun, a lot of interest for six grand. You know, and so many of these died to give their way to make into parts cars because these things were, they were on the road, they were everywhere. They actually probably sold a good number of them. I saw them all the time, but nobody spent the money on maintenance like they needed, and so they died yeah. a kind of an early death. And, you know, we're, you know somebody put 140,000 miles on it, parked it on the side of the road and left. Uh, so there's got to be a lot of parts cars out there. And of course, there'll be parts out of England for them uh, as well. So um, I, I would say that this is, the, this is going to be a, uh, you know, a Radwood of the future winner if there ever is one. So actually, you could do it right now. So. so, you know, maybe we could talk a little bit broader here for a second, Dave, because dare I say, dare I say that the market is coming back to us real enthusiasts. And by that, I mean, what have we been talking about? We talked about the Stutz crazy price, but then all these other cars that are really nicely priced and opportunities for people. So I am sensing, you know, from our folks from talking to you, from folks at the, you know, Haggerty Insider who track this, they're saying there are just not cracks, but opportunities for those who really love cars to get us some better deals. Do you agree? <laughs> And I agree, and especially in the under fifty thousand dollar market, which is where I like to oh. play, and the under twenty thousand mm. dollar market, which I love to play in. Uh, but yeah, I think there are. I think well, number one, it's heading to winter. Uh, winter is oh, coming, right. as we say in the uh, uh, you know uh, everywhere right now. But anyhow, it's heading into <laughs> heading heading into winter. So people are trying to get rid of some of their uh, excess cars, their stuff that they've got hanging on. Also, uh, you know, everybody. You know, everybody's saying, oh, the economy's horrible. The economy's not horrible. The economy's okay, but it's certainly not on fire like it was a year ago at this time. And so, uh, you know, I think that a lot of people are, are getting very realistic about their auction estimates or much more realistic about their auction estimates. And, they're, you know, they'd rather sell than make new friends by taking their car 700 miles uh, away to the auction. So uh, good for them. Dave, you're one of those sons of bitches that puts up his Christmas lights now before Thanksgiving, aren't you? I oh, no, I'm, no, yes, I'm, you are. Are. no you I'm totally not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I put you out on a ladder weeks ago. Get up there. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's uh, that was that was getting that was you. getting the leaves down. I'll send you photos. I will send you photos. Uh, we well, have the ne- a Christmas the free one, house right now. The next car for sale, that this was one that you highlighted, and I know you're trying to stick the knife in here because I'm in the middle of a Ferrari restoration, and this is a Dino. And um, the auctioneer, it's for sale by RM Sotheby's, it's in Munich, calls it a project. Right. And, man, they photographed it really well because unless you really look at it, you think, hey, it's not that bad. But then- <laughs> they didn't show you the <laughs> other side of the car. That's the problem. <laughs> 
Um, this is a famous owner car. This is owned by the extremely very late and really nice guy and very talented man, Alan DeCadene's car. Oh, uh, it is. Yeah. And oh, of course, uh, you know, he was a Le Mans driver and also very, very well known for all the things he did in the, uh, not just the race car world, but also in the old car world. Great guy, uh, great broadcast guy. guy, just, you know, fantastic. This is a, one of 153 206 Dinos. Uh, and this was imported to the UK when it was new. Um, it's a really, really great car, and they have it for a, I would call it almost a sandbag, uh, you know, of, a, uh, of an estimate. They've got it estimated for between 150 and 200,000 euros. The euro is right around the same value as the dollar right now. Uh, a, a number four uh, of this car goes for 545,000 in the price guide, where a, num a number one goes for 790. Larry. We can do a lot of body work on this car and fix what's wrong with it for the difference between seven hundred and ninety and if this car was to sell for two hundred thousand. But first oh, we need the two hundred thousand. So there's your problem. The opportunity. Right there. Then I've we need the talent. For this. Then we need the talent. I got yeah. this, Dave. I okay. got you. Okay. You, you front the money for you, I'll take care of it. Yeah. We Wait have a, a problem already. Explain this is kind of interesting that the so of course. Most of the Dinos, uh, this was the first Dino. It was a sub-brand of Ferrari. Most of them had a removal Targa, and this is a fixed roof. So right. that adds the value right there. Well, the 206, Dave, explain for everybody the difference between the 206 and the much more common 246. Yeah, they built more 246s. The 206 engine had been around for a while, also in 206 Dinos, as you probably are aware. Uh, the Fiat Dino style, that would be uh, both coupe and convertible as well. So a uh, little lower horsepower, a little bit smaller displacement than the 246. We really didn't get the 206s as much here as you know we had a, a lot of U.S. landed 246. Uh, they did get a little more fancy uh, when they got older, um, but uh, nothing wrong with an early 206. I like I said, I think RMs, you know, and good for them. Wait, 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 it... wait, 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 well, wait. Okay, okay. So the 206 is worth more. The Dino 206 is worth more than the 246, right? Not necessarily. Not, Not necessarily. Because necessarily. Yeah. that price sounded, you know, the Dino was on our bull market list uh, last year. And I remember that was worth about 450 number two-ish. And so these things have continued to, well, I guess we were correct that they were poised to take off and they really have. Oh, yeah. That was a great call. That was a great that call. That was a great call? Yes, it okay. was. Yeah. So um, I drove one of these. They're fantastic. They're light. Uh, you can see out of them. Super gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. It's like the most beautiful thing. But the 206, um, you want the bigger displacement motor. It's just slower. I mean, that is the downside of this car, I think. It's only got the 206 uh, engine. You know, that doesn't bother you, does it? No, it really doesn't because, I mean, this is a, certainly not a boulevardier. It's a, it's not even a Grand Tour. It's a little sports car. I think there's plenty of power in a 206 Dino. Uh, I mean, you know, okay, yeah, you, you know, nothing beats horsepower. That's, a, that's exactly right. But it's still a good-looking car. I think this car is all about the design, all about the build, all about the unusual construction of the car. Uh, you know, it's mid-engine car, so you've got a trunk in the front and a trunk in the back. I guess we now call them frunks in the trunk. I mean, in the front. Uh, and really, really highly developed for its time. Um, you know, not well appreciated as it should have been when it came out, but I love the design of these cars. It just looks really, really good. Not organic good. Not like it just came from the earth good, but really well sculpted good. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. It'll and, be interesting and, to see. And like yeah. I said, I think that, uh, you know, by putting it in, in a very low reserve, uh, I think they're going to get an awful lot of activity on this car. Um, we, we should check back after. This is a Munich sale at uh, 26th of November, so it's coming up. Let's check in on this one and see what it went for. But uh, I'm thinking it's not going to be anywhere close to 200,000 euro. I think you and I get on a plane for Thanksgiving weekend and go out there and get this thing. Decadne would not have bought a crummy car. That's right. right? He That's knew what right. he was doing. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, um, again, you always say you buy the previous owner, and Decadne really knew what he was doing. So he must have bought it really cheap because for a while they were. All right, I'm going to stop drooling over that car because I want to move on. This is another uh, machine that I think is going to have its day, and that are, is the original Hummer H1. Uh, quick backstory to these things. These were the military vehicles. I think they came out in the 80s to replace the Jeep. And then they made a civilian version in the 90s. This uh, one is on the Haggerty Marketplace right now. It's a 97 Hummer H1. 
It's for sale for 20 grand right now is what the bidding is up to. This is the wagon version, so it's got a lot of utility. Um, and this one actually I think is better. It's been used. So it's got the diesel engine, a six and a half liter turbo diesel, but this means it's been developed, tweaked, maintained, all that stuff. Um, this is going to be a cool car. What do you think? Yeah, it's the HMCS model, which is, uh, you know, Hummer talk for the wagon. Like you said, it's in a great color. It's burgundy, which, you know, uh, you've seen so many of these in uh, black, you know, and olive color. drab and black and, uh, you know, white and all that sort of stuff. So it's great colors. We have these in the price. Oh, by the way, it's very important you realize it comes with twenty thousand dollars worth of spare parts. So whatever the bid is at twenty grand, they've just paid for the spare parts. They haven't started buying the buying the Hummer in uh, in itself. Um, these things are uh, top out in the price guide. And yes, Larry, we have these in the price guide as well for a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Our number two is ninety three three. Our number three is sixty two thousand. And our number four is 35. This is a lot better than a number four, just taking a look at it. It's going to be interesting to see where it, uh, where it winds up. So um, right. that's, again, that's in uh, Haggerty Marketplace, right? Yeah. Um, it's got a weird steering wheel, so that does degrade it a little bit for me. But, you know, having spent a lot of time in these cars, they're, they're really weird uh, because they're huge, but yet all the powertrain and everything is tucked up so high so it, it it's not hanging down below that between you the driver and the passenger it feels like it's four feet like you almost can't touch them <laughs> yeah exactly and uh the same goes for the the rear passengers and they're really loud they're hard to park but i mean in terms of charisma and uh just something really cool and indestructible and they're great off-road obviously uh totally totally hard to beat i think you know, for a while, these were forgotten, but I think they're starting to come back. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I, you know, I, I, there's a lot to like here. Let's just put it this way. This is not my cup of tea, but that's okay. Um, they are huge. They are, they make a statement. Um, they are actually fun to take off roading. Uh, bring your kidney pads because they are not a, uh, you know, they are not a luxury vehicle in every way. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, spare parts would never be a problem with these because, uh, uh, our uncle Sammy, uh, bought, you know, oh, about a billion and a half of them. Right. So, uh, yeah, so they'll be around for a long time. Yeah. So the next one is, is another one of these crazy, uh, undriven cars. This one's on bring a trailer right now. It's a 2001 Isuzu Trooper with 465 miles on it. I mean, um, I, I'm still shocked this continues to not happen, but we continue to find these cars that were purchased and then parked. And this is even an odder one because who else buys a, a early 2000 SUV, but somebody that's got a family has got to haul around. Well, Larry, I mean, you know, here's the deal. This is probably some rich guy, right? And you've bought a shirt before, right? And you wore it once. And you put it in your closet, and it sat there for like 10 years until you discovered it another time, right? Well, for rich people, this is just like buying a shirt. You know, they bought another car. Uh, they put it at their third house and, you know, somewhere or something like that. They parked it, and it just sat. Now, there's a lot of, uh, uh, let's just call it lack of love on, uh, on Bring a Trailer right now in this car. And everybody's saying, well, wait a minute, 465 miles and it's got uh, rust, you know, uh, uh, not rust, That's but surface, rust, surface yeah. rust on the, you know, on the chassis. Have you ever parked a car outside for 20 years? I mean, you know, this stuff does happen. So it's going to need some reconditioning. I believe it to be a 465 mile car. I think, uh, you know, I, look, wait, you look why? at well, well, why? the interior why? looks good. I mean, there's a, yeah, there's, there's paint bubbling. I get that. It's all stuff that came from sitting outside. Uh, it doesn't mean that it was in a bubble. I mean, you know, for car collector guys, you know, we always see these cars that, you know, somebody bought new and it's JP got rocks car and he put it in one of his outbuildings on his mansion. And sure enough, it's air conditioned. It's heated all the time. Well, this guy left it out. It's probably under a pine tree somewhere. He said, yeah, I'll get to driving it. You know what? I really hate it. I don't like it. Let's just let it sit or something along those lines. But, uh, so 465 miles doesn't need, it's doesn't mean it's brand new in the wrapper. It just means it's incredibly low miles. You're going to have to do the brakes. You're going to have to do all the rubber bits inside on the, uh, uh, you know, inside the engine compartment, all the you know, fan belt, uh, all that sort of stuff, the wires inside. Uh, you know, engine compartment stuff is what I'm talking about. Not, uh, you know, hopefully the wiring harness is intact. 
It's at $6,100 this morning. I have no earthly idea where this thing's going to wind up, but everybody loves these troopers, and uh, you know this could be a, uh, somebody's home run. Who knows? Oh, yeah. This is when the trooper got worse. Yeah. The, the generation before this was way cooler. It was way more primitive. So this was a more comfortable, more refined one. I agree. The interior photos, um, you know, especially the carpet, these are some of the telltale signs that help you decide if the mileage is legit. And um, I agree. It's really funny looking at it. You know, this era, like the late 90s, the Japanese, they all had the same basic dash design, right? Yep. That it went across and then down the center in black. The, this, they must have all bought the shifter from the same company. And um, but yeah, what a weird time capsule car. I mean, these just had really nothing to differentiate themselves at the time other than, you know, the, the rear door was kind of cool. It had a one third, two third door, which, you know, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think it'll get, oh, I think it'll get 15 grand. Hmm. I bet you it does a little better than that. You do? Yeah, I do. Oh, I do. I think this thing's going to do in the twenties. Um, but I, you know, this is one of those, I'm not going to bet any uh, real money on. So, uh, I mean, it could go either way in terms of if it's going to go, uh, I, you know, I, I can make an argument for well into the 20s. Let's put it that way. Mm, okay. Well, it'll be fun to watch. Um, let's get to the questions. Thank you very much for your questions. We really appreciate it. Uh, Terry from Federal Way, Washington. He went to a collector sale in Vegas. Maybe this Mecham one. Who knows? And he saw a group of guys bidding on a car. Does it happen often that people pool their money to buy a single car? And is it smart? Oh, boy. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. You go first. I, I don't think it's smart. Let's just put it that way. But people do, you know, and I think I, I've seen these groups at, uh, uh, well, Scottsdale and in Vegas at auctions where it's usually a bunch of guys. Let's say they're golfing buddies or something like that. They get together, five or six of them. Instead of going out for, you know, a weekend in uh, yeah, somewhere to go, you know, skeet shooting or something like that, where there's a lot of uh, male bonding and, you know, uh, uh, shall we say alcohol involved. Uh, a lot of times they'll go to Vegas and they'll uh, you know do the uh, uh, you know a night at the uh, night at the tables and you know pull some money and I think this uh, you know what he might have seen was somebody doing something along those lines. Everybody throws in five grand. There's five of them. They have twenty five grand. They decide what car to buy home, to bring home. Now, I will say as an appraiser, I have run into this more than once when somebody calls me and they say. Hey, we bought this Corvette at an auction, and you know he starts out with we, and he's not talking about him and his wife or him and his partner or something like that. Uh, and then it never gets better from there because they could never decide what they wanted, so they wound up with something that was kind of a you know another one of these cars that had this excuse and that excuse or something like that. And uh-huh. even though they thought that these cars were all you know fifty thousand dollar cars, well, they bought the exception. They bought the twenty two thousand dollar one, and they paid twenty five thousand, or worse yet, the fifteen thousand dollar one. Wait, Dave, 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 what's the headline? Can we get to the point? What are you saying? Now, you know, don't buy cars either, buddy. There's a, are we all headlines now? Is that how we're doing it? Because you know, we, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, man, it's the oh. internet age, man. Nobody's got time. You know it. All right, well, let, let me tell you a story. Okay, the headline is no, <laughs> don't do it. All right. Uh, it, wait, it, wait, wait, wait. I've done it twice, and it's worked out. It has? Tell me more. Yeah. Get to the headline, yeah, well, Larry. I bought cars with other people twice, and I didn't do it with a group. I think that's the oh, key. Yeah. You're, you're probably saying, too many cooks. Yeah, exactly. It was me and one other guy. We owned a race car together for eight years. We raced it. We fixed it. Each of us crashed it. We just both had really realistic ex, uh, expectations. And we said, look, anybody crashes, we're going to split it, because I trusted them. Same goes, uh, and we had a great time. We sold it. We didn't care what we got. The next car I bought, a friend of mine came to me, and he says, hey, there's this NSX at a used car dealer here in Ann Arbor. I think it's a great deal. It's 30,000 miles. They want 30 grand. I was like, wow, great, 91, bought it. We each split it. Though That almost didn't work out because I wanted to drive it. He didn't, mm-hmm. and he really didn't want to use it. So we said, well, let's, we'll sell it. And it was right at the time when NSX has went nuts and it sold for $65,000 six months later. So Dave, that's my one and only successful flip. Well, that's a, so that's we, a pretty good flip. I'm sure you told the IRS about it, right? Uh, Dave, <laughs> this is so inappropriate. Why would you get into my personal finances <laughs> on this show? 
I'm no used car dealer, Dave, of course. Of course you did. <laughs> yes, of course you did. That's the answer. So anyway, anyway, um, you know, I, I think if you are really open and you communicate and it all is based on trust, it can work. You've probably done it. I know you have. Well, I just found out that you had two friends. I had no idea. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I did learn something today. So, there you go. No, I, I say, you know, I don't think you would do it with a group. I think, you know, two people pooling their money, that's fine. Uh, don't do it while you're drunk. Uh, don't do it on the spot. You know, do your research and, and you know, target a few cars. But, yeah, uh, it can be done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Meg from Auburn, New York. Her question is, do auction companies allow you to inspect and test drive a car before the sale? Great question, Dave. What, what, what's the answer? The answer is yes and no. Um, you can inspect yeah. cars at auctions most of the time. You, you can't take them apart. I mean, you know, you can look under the hood at most auctions. There's some that are a little picky about that. You should be a registered bidder before you do that. And you should tell somebody at the auction company what you're doing so they don't think you're stealing gear shift knobs out of the car. Uh, but uh, uh, And there are auctions. Uh, I, I will say that Gooding is really good about this. I've seen this a number of times. And, of course, RM is as well. Um, uh, you can go with a specialist in bottoms as well. So I'm sure Broad Arrow will do the same thing. Uh, they have enough time that if you show up the day early or two days early, hopefully, uh, and you tell them that you're interested and you're known, a, a known bidder would help a known person, they'll take you out for a spin. Uh, and, uh, you can learn a lot about the car that way. That's a lot better than just buying blind. So, uh, I would just say, the answer is yes in some instances and no in another. You can't do it at a Mecham sale, most likely, unless you know somebody there, because they just have too many cars and there's too too little time oh, to get it done. Yeah, like a Barrett Jackson would be tough. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. I get that. And I mean, you know, that's fine. When you're selling 600 cars in a weekend, it's a lot different than selling six cars in a weekend. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I think even, even online auctions, I would recommend you, if you can, get in touch with the seller and see if you can go drive it or go for a ride as you said i think it's um it's been hard doing this show because i'm looking at all these cars and i start getting itchy fingers <laughs> and I, the last one i bought sight unseen i actually wrote about it on the uh haggerty media website and it was a complete train wreck that looked fantastic in the pictures so I'm glad I remembered that. I'm going to go back and reread that and try and uh, stay to that because I find it very, very unreliable to buy cars or off the internet. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I mean, there's always driving. an element of risk. Never, ever, ever spend more money than you can lose. Yeah, but Dave, if you do that, then you don't have any cool cars. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they, they, well, there's still five hundred dollar cars out there. You can, you know, uh, you can you can buy them online if you want. Or hey, how about a, a, a Mercur? You could buy that. That's uh, six grand. Okay, great point. So w w you know we're gonna wrap this show up. Tons of interesting a action this week, right? We we saw a lot of cars, really cool, for reasonable money. Fantastic, Dave. Floor is yours. Do you have any final comments? Yeah, I'm thinking that uh, maybe, just maybe, uh, with the sanity returning the market, we'll uh, we'll get more. Uh, opportunity to look at some of these cars that uh, go for below the price guide value. And uh, we'll also have a lot more fun cars that we can talk about in the under $50,000 range that are affordable for mm. more people. So I think that's, uh, I'm looking forward to some of that. Plus, we, we got to throw in the million dollar cars as well. But, um, you mm. know, it's, it, it's going to be a fun winter, I think. Well, I got you, Dave. Lots of good exciting deals coming back it's very very exciting um i for one i know you had something to do with that studs bearcat auction just to make me look bad i will not forget this i know what you did <laughs> the evil dave strikes again <laughs> i know you're very connected you've been around for a long time uh so payback will be ugly but let's remember these cars are investments in joy as we all say, Dave and I both say all the time, buy what you love and you'll never be disappointed. Please, we love your questions. Leave them in the comments. And thank you so much for listening. Catch you next week on No Reserve. Take care, everyone.